run to him. Oh, who are weary? Rest on him. Oh, who are weak? For his birth. So we run, we run, we run into your arms. We sing, we sing, we sing to the melody of your love, your love, your love. Trust in Him. For us.
Welcome, good morning everybody. Welcome to Grosvenor Church Service. It's always a pleasure to have you here connect with us. Thank you very much for being here. I can see many people already are connected with us. If I don't know where you're from, but would you like to welcome you? Even if you're watching us from different countries, different areas, God bless you. Uh, myself and my wife, Albertiza, we are very happy to host you here uh, on behalf of the elders of Grosvenor Church. So thank you very much again for being with us. So I hope you uh, enjoy the service. We uh, prepare some really good things for your encouragement. And I hope God can bless you today. Um, this is a... I need to just to notice uh, some things which I need uh, your... Uh, um, attention because uh, um, uh, the first notice is, is as you know we depend on having a good uh, internet signal and sometimes we don't have that so we need to have here a good signal and then you need also to have at your house a good internet signal if in any moment uh, it is it, frozen the page is frozen, you just reload the page, I'm sure you'll be back. But also, uh, this service is being recorded, and later on, we'll be uploading to our YouTube Grosvenor Church uh, channel. So if you miss something for any reason, you can go there later on, and you can just watch the part you miss it. I hope God bless us. We don't have any problem this morning, all right? So let's start with our uh, notices. First of all, we, we would love to have you connect with us. Oh, it's a pleasure. Uh, I, I would like to encourage you to go to our uh, Barnesville Grosvenor Church website uh, and uh, click online services. There will be welcome cards, and then you can fill the card with your details. We will be very pleased to make contact with you later around. Uh, the elders uh, will be happy to contact you or someone from church. Uh, just go there, just fill the cards if you want to find out more about Grosvenor Church. So the other one is... If the, you, the neighborhood chaplains are doing amazing uh, job in terms of serving people, praying for people, encouraging people. If you know anyone who are self-isolated, uh, there is a, a, a phone number here. You can actually make contact with, with these people and, and, and I'm sure they will be talking to you, they will be praying for you, or you can recommend this this uh, phone number to someone else. Uh, the other other thing is a if you need to pray for any any reason for any any uh, uh, situation you live in, uh, the elders of Grosvenor will be willing to pray for you. You can also ring it to your small group leader or go to our website and or email direct to Graham Poland, please. We will be praying for you. Uh, as maybe you know, every from Monday to Friday, from half past 10 to 11, just half an hour, we have a daily devotional. It's been amazing giving brothers and sisters opportunity to share what God is being speaking to them. So if you have a time, uh, just join us and, and uh, basically what we have is uh, worship, Bible reading and prayer time. Uh, last one is a uh, next Sunday uh, we're going to have, uh, uh, we will continue our series When Jesus Comes to You, Part 3, Tony Otway will be sharing in Luke chapter 5 verse 27 to 32. 
if you want to read this text during the week, meditate, and then you'll be ready for uh, next week Tony uh, preaching. The, the other thing I want to just to, to bring here for our attention is this amazing uh, ministry in Zimbabwe, Rehoboth. Um, they've been celebrating, praise the Lord, 12 years old. We would, we would like to congratulations uh, Mark and Dorcas and, and the children over there. So may God keep blessing you. We are so happy, guys, to have you here with us. And then, and then uh, God bless you. Thank you very much. So let's let's pray now for us to starting uh, uh, our service. Lord Jesus, we thank you very much for this amazing opportunity. Thank you very much for in a way you being uh, speaking to us, in a way you being encouraging us. Thank you very much for answers of prayer. Thank you, Lord, for everyone who is uh, connect with us. Uh, and I just pray for you to speak to their hearts and bless them. Lord, we just surrender this service to your hands. Myself and our bitches, we pray, asking you, Lord, bless, bless, bless us in this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So there are some people from church. Would you like to welcome you? See you later at the end of the service. Welcome to church. Hello, Grosvenor Church. church. We are five. Surprise. Surprise. It is lovely time to have you here. We pray that God will shine his face upon you abundantly and bless you in this time so much that you'll need sunglasses. See? It is lovely. Bye, everyone. Bye. Hi, um, my name is Cap and I live in South Milton and I'm just here with a little message to welcome you to our online service here at Grosvenor. So, um, welcome. I hope you'll be really blessed. So what was that say? Say good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Grosvenor. Church. Welcome to Grosvenor Church. We're the Allens. We're the Allens. And we don't know what we're doing. <laughs> We believe there 
there is more Let the waves of revival Crash over and over again We welcome you Come Holy Spirit Come Holy Spirit We give you the room Come set our hearts on fire Completely for you We're hungry family at Grosvenor Church. Um, I just wanted to share with you all about a fundraiser that I did very recently. Uh, lots of you saw my stair climb on Facebook. Um, basically I set out to walk up and down the stairs 400 times to replicate walking up Mount Snowdon. So um, I did this on Saturday the 2nd of May. It took me two hours which I was really pleased with. I did lots of training beforehand. Um, and the reason I was doing this climb was to raise money for RIA Ministries, um, which is run by Kenny and Mary Zahid from Pakistan. You might remember them. Uh, Kenny preached at our church before and recently as well um, via the internet. Um, so they do amazing work that you would have heard of. But the reason for my climb was because they were, RIA Ministries was putting together food parcels for families that didn't have enough to eat during the COVID crisis. Um, so £25 will feed a family for two weeks. And um, I'm so excited that um, we managed to raise £823 uh, during the fundraiser. So I'm so blessed by all your love and support. Thank you for everyone who's prayed, donated and been there. So 
that much money will feed 32 families for two weeks, which is amazing. There's a real food crisis in Pakistan because people aren't able to leave their homes and move around freely because of the coronavirus, which means people can't make money uh, to afford food. So these food parcels are just a real safety line for families. So yeah, thank you so much for all your support. You can go online and check out uh, my fundraiser um, and see videos from it. But yeah, if you would like to donate further, then um, do let me know. Um, my GoFundMe page will be in the link. I can link that below. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for your help and support. And it's a really amazing cause to think that we have fed 32 families uh, just from that one fundraiser. Thank you all. Bless you. Bye. Me a little nod when to do it. Good. <laughs> it didn't clap. <laughs> Morning, kids. I'm going to tell you about an amazing miracle that involves a rooftop. On the way up, I've got a cracking joke for you. So I was in Wix's getting some roofing materials, and this guy walks up in front of me, and he's dressed in a dolphin's costume. And he got to the front of the tail in front of me, and he said. You know, like dolphins do. Anyway, the lady at the till made him go off down the down the end of the store, and uh, and off he goes. And then I went to the lady at the till. So what was all that about? She goes, I sent him to click and collect. <laughs> that was awful. <laughs> Sermon on the roof. Uh, take two hundred and thirty-seven. Action. So, two thousand years ago, where Jesus lived, somebody else would have just been repairing their roof too. Ooh, a bit high up here. Um, would you like me to stand on the ladder? Could you bring me up some tiles, please? Yes, of course. So, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I have got these from El Jusons. So, what had been going on was Jesus had been in town and he'd been just doing the most amazing miracles. He'd been healing sick people, he'd been doing all sorts of crazy stuff. Thank you. And people, oh, everybody around wanted to be near him. Can you imagine the whole town would have come to see Jesus? And this one particular day, he was in a house that had a roof a bit like this one. And he, the house was full, everybody from the whole town was trying to crowd into the house. There was people inside, outside, all over the place. Can you imagine everybody who was sick were trying to get near Jesus? Because he could heal anybody. There was this one particular guy, he was so poorly. He was what they call paralysed, so his legs didn't work. He had to rely on his friends to take him everywhere. They didn't have wheelchairs. So his friends would have to carry him places. He totally relied on them. This was their big chance. Jesus was in town. What are we going to do? They said, how on earth can we get through that big crowd? They said, I don't know, I can't even walk. How can I get through a crowd? This one friend said, I've got the best plan ever. See that roof? Let's carry you up there, all of us, on your mat. We'll take some tiles off the roof. And they said, ah, what? how do you do that? He says, easy, I seen my dad do it. So off they go and they go up the roof. And they start pulling a hole in the roof, taking tiles off. And then they fix ropes to the guy's uh, blanket, to his mat, and they lower him down. They lower him, lower him, lower him, right down to where Jesus is. And it goes right in front of Jesus. Thanks, Fletch. Shalom. <laughs> the man comes right down in front of Jesus. And can you imagine how pleased Jesus would be? He's so pleased with these boys because they're showing this thing called faith. They know that Jesus will heal him. All he's got to do is see him, be in front of him and touch him. Jesus was so pleased, he says, because of your faith, your sins are forgiven. And I remember thinking, why didn't he just fix the man's legs like he wanted? But Jesus could see something far more important. He wanted to mend the man's heart first, and he did. And he was so pleased, he then mended his legs. And he said, get up, take up your mat and walk. Everybody was astonished. Everybody was just amazed at what Jesus had done. Do you know what now, kids? You can't be with your friends now because we're not allowed to be out and about, are we? But 
Apart, unless you're on a roof mending it and drinking tea. I was thinking, you've got such amazing faith. It's like another sense. It's like a superpower you've got. You know, you've got like senses like you see things with your eyes, don't you? you can touch things with your fingers, you can taste things with your tongue, you can smell things with your nose. Well, God gives us this thing called faith, and that means we can know something's real using this sense called faith. And he loves it if you use it. What I was going to say was, next time you see a roof today, think about your friends, maybe that don't know Jesus, maybe some of your friends need fixing. Use your faith and pray for them. It's a bit like carrying your friends to Jesus. You're going to carry them and you're going to put them in front of Jesus. Jesus is going to be so pleased with you, with your faith, and he's going to fix them. I can't wait to hear about your miracles that are going to happen. I can't wait to hear them. You tell me. Phone Auntie Paula up. Tell her what's going on. And um, I'll see you in a Dad. bit. City Hope, it's great to be with you here um, by this uh, YouTube meeting. Um, I'm speaking from Ukraine where we've been in lockdown for seven weeks already with at least another two to go. Um, so well, there are lots of challenges and a lot of people in our Genesis healing uh, groups have not been able to continue via the Zoom and Skype meetings that we have been using to continue to run the groups. We're very grateful for your prayers for the end of the fires, which destroyed over 500 hectares of land around the country and raged for three weeks. But thanks to the rain, it's now been uh, finished. We see that God is doing lots of good things uh, during this time. Uh, we are not able to go out in groups of more than two or go out for exercise, but we are allowed in private homes to be able to meet up to 10 people. So while most churches are just uh, operating online, we have can divided the church into small geographical groups uh, where we're able to continue to worship God, to break bread together, to have fellowship. And as a result, we've been able to see the way that more leaders are growing. And many of the people who were very uh, timid to share in the larger groups are uh, being able to take much more uh, active part in hearing from God, sharing words of prophecy. And so we see that people right across the church are significantly growing as a result of this time we realize that God is using this time as a time of preparation for the future. Just like the pressure that the Israelites were put on before they were taken out of Egypt, we see that God is putting his pressure on the whole world and particularly the church in order to be able to prepare us uh, to be able to push into him to receive more of his peace, his provision, his love for us so that we are less affected by the circumstances around us and can be confident to be operating and in, in tune with God so that when uh, increased uh, troubles come that are predicted in many places in the Bible, in Matthew 24, 
in Revelations, Daniel 10, we know that um, God will use the church um, in the proclamation of the gospel in signs and wonders. And so we see that this is a time for us to make sure that we are not uh, growing weak, but we are growing stronger. Thank you again so much for your prayers. We are very grateful for the ongoing participation that we have with you in City Hope, and it's great to be part of. Thank you. God bless. Lord, we give you this time as an offering of praise and worship, God. Come and meet with us. Show us how high and how wide and how deep and how long your love is for us, God. Take us deeper with you in this time. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say, Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you, we live for you. Holy, there is no one like you, there is none beside you. song we could ever sing, worthy of all the praise we could ever bring, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you, we live for you, Jesus, Jesus, the name above every other Jesus, the only one who could ever say, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you, we live for you. Holy, there is no one like you, there is none beside you.
show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. And show us your glory, show us your glory, in wonder and surrender we fall down. Show us your glory, show us your glory, let every burning heart be holy ground. Show us, show us your glory, show us your glory in wonder and surrender we fall down show us your glory show us your glory let every burning heart be holy ground chains chains fall And I will build 
we have Jack come and share with us. I pray that you would lead and guide his words, God, that he would speak all that you want him to, God. Amen. Good morning, church. 
I wonder, have you ever been in a group of friends who have egged you on to do something just a little bit stupid? Now, I can only speak from experience, but there's something about a group of guys getting together that makes certain ideas that would normally seem like a terrible idea suddenly seem to make perfect sense. I've got lots of examples from my teenage years, ranging from flooding a friend's garden to skateboarding down an indoor set of stairs, which usually ended up in some sort of damage. Well, in this story, which uh, Jeremy explained for us amazingly, we hear a really positive story of when a group of friends decided to do something just a little bit crazy. And so here's that story again uh, from a series, a new series called The Chosen. That's a rope! Put it back, man! If you are willing, Rabbi, I know you can do this. By whose authority do you teach? Answer me! If you are willing, Rabbi, you know you can't. Hey, I'm talking to you! By whom do you teach? Certainly not the authority of any rabbi from Nazareth. Where did you study? Your faith is beautiful. Son, take heart. Your sins are forgiven. Who is this who speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Right. But I ask you, which is easier to say? Your sins are forgiven or rise up and walk? It's easy to say anything, no? But to show you, and so that you may know that the Son of Man has the authority on earth to forgive sins. I say to you, my son, rise. Pick up your bed. And go home. two things from this story there's loads we could pick out but there's two things I wanted to just pick out today and that's uh, intercession and faith and we see examples of them both in that group of men who carry 
their paralysed friend to Jesus. So we've been doing a family quiz every Friday night during this lockdown on Zoom. I know lots of others have. And here's a couple of quiz questions for you. So what you can do is in the comment section on Facebook, if you're watching on Facebook right now, is you can comment. I think the first person to comment correctly gets a prize. Ramon's going to issue those prizes later on. So the first question is, in what country is the world's longest bridge? Bonus points if you get the cities it connects. I'll give you a moment. Okay, so the answer is China. China has the world's longest bridge and it's the Danyang Kunshan, I've probably said that wrong, bridge which connects Beijing and Shanghai and it spans 102 miles and here's a picture of that bridge. Okay, second quiz question, you can put your answer in the comments. Where is the tallest bridge in the world? Again, points for a country, first person to get the right country, tallest bridge in the world, bonus points for the person to get nearest for the height. How high is it? Points for the person who gets closest. Okay, so the answer is China again and the A's High Bridge. It's 350 meters up and here's a little clip of what it looks like. talking about bridges. Well, ever since the beginning of the Bible, in the Garden of Eden, we have learned about a gap that has appeared between God and man. See, human sin and rejection of God created this impossible barrier between us and God. It was like humankind was on one side of those valleys for those bridges, like the tallest valley, the longest valley you could imagine. And it was this impossible distance with mankind on one side and God on the other. This impossible gap to span. But the good news is that right from that first moment of our falling in the Garden of Eden, God promised a solution to bridge that gap. See, when Jesus came, he stood in the gap between God and mankind. So he lived a perfect life. He died a sacrificial death on a cross. He paid the way for all of our sins. And then when he rose again, he defeated death. And what he did was he made a way from death to life. And the curtain of that temple in the Old Testament was, was torn in two because the separation between God and man was torn in two. And there was now a bridge available between us for us to go over. But here's the almost crazier part. In 1 Peter 2 verse 9, Peter describes a church and he says of you and me, he says, we are now a royal priesthood. He says we have the same job description as those priests in the Old Testament. And Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5, we've been given a ministry of reconciliation. So we now have that job that priests had to reconcile God and man through Jesus, through the gospel, through and through prayer. And this story in Luke is it's a great picture of that, of intercession. You see, that lame man had no ability to get to Jesus on his own. See, for the first time in his life, there was, he heard perhaps the story, the possibility 
of getting healed, of getting breakthrough, of a transformation of his life. Not just physical change, but social change, total transformation. But he, but he couldn't get there. He was totally limited. He physically could not get where he needed to be to get in front of Jesus. So where he lacked, his friends and his family must have stood in the gap. See, they made a way, they bridged that gap from him to be able to get to Jesus. And they must have literally dragged him into that place. They dragged him into the presence of the Saviour. And that same call, it rests on us as believers. See, God has given us part of the story to play. Because there are, there are those in our world, there are those in our nation and our communities who don't know Jesus. And they cannot come to him in prayer. They cannot ask him on their own. See, spiritually, they are, they're like that lame man. They just lack the ability to come to him. Unless they hear the gospel from us, unless they are drawn by God's spirit and through prayer, they cannot come to God. So I wonder, who is it in your life? that you can bring before God in prayer. And notice they, they didn't bring the man alone. It wasn't one friend, it was a group of them, a team. And it's, it's a bit mysterious, uh, but there's something about the faith of the group, which in verse 20, it says, Jesus saw their faith, not the man's faith, not one of their faith, their faith, their group of them's faith, which stirred the heart of Jesus to respond. And we know there's something powerful through the Bible when God's people come together as a group in unity collectively to pray and agree something in prayer. So I wonder for you uh, in your family, uh, if you're in a couple, in your marriage, in your family group, in, in us as a church, what is it God is calling us to pray for? Who are we being called to bring before God at this time? to desperately just drag them before God and persistently just get him, get them there to pray for them and believe if we get them before God, there could be a breakthrough. And, and here's where faith comes in. Intercession is an act of faith. See, those men, they walked in a faith that Jesus was the solution for their friend. And their faith changed how they saw that reality of their situation. Because walking in, in faith to Jesus in Jesus looks different from walking in the ways of the world. See, firstly, faith doesn't let obstacles get in the way. See, dragging that man on that mat must have been hard work. And when they saw the crowd, they could have so easily said to their friend, well, look, sorry, we tried, there's no other way in. They could have gone home and perhaps no one would have blamed them. It was a perfectly valid excuse. You know, praying for your friends, praying for our community can be hard work. It can be a slog. It can be daily. It can be feel like dragging a fully grown man through a town. And then maybe we hit an even harder obstacle. Maybe the problem gets worse. Maybe there's more obstacles or barriers in the way. And we can feel like giving up. But having faith that Jesus can change the situation can mean not letting obstacles or opposition get in our way or stopping us. See, if God has clearly called you to something, when we see that crowd in front of us, when we see the obstacles come in the way, that is not the point to give up. That is the point to ask the question, what will it take to see this dream fulfilled? And quite often that thing will be quite radical and maybe it's not going to be according to the rules of the world. See, if we only ever operate according to the rules of the world, we'll only get the results the world can deliver. If we only ever operate according to the rules of the world, we'll only get the results the world can deliver. And for those men, that faith-filled, radical response, it looked like pulling tiles off a roof, ripping it apart just to get someone to Jesus. It looked like destroying someone's property just to get near him. I'm not suggesting at all that we destroy anyone's property, but if we look at situations through the eyes of faith, it changes what we're willing to do. See, faith sees the opportunity 
of Jesus transforming a situation or a community or a family or a nation and is willing to look just a bit stupid to get there. If it is true that a transcendent, all-powerful creator God is involved in human life, he is not and cannot be limited by the rules of how this world operates. See, intercession and prayer requires faith because it relies solely on the works of God. Because if we're all wrong, if Jesus didn't really rise from the dead, then those of other worldviews might look on at us and they might admire our giving to the poor. Our community and fellowship times could still have been fun and valuable. Our teaching would have still created just a positive and consistent morality on which to build a society. Our meditation and fasting could have been positive for our worldview. But if we're wrong, then our intercession and crying out to create a God to intervene in the world is utterly pointless. It's wasting some of that short, precious time we have on earth. And yet, the scripture and history teaches us that prayer and intercession is the most powerful tool the church possesses. Every great move of God has been partnered by and preceded by a great move of prayer. And yet in the eyes of the world, it's a waste. It's a waste of a precious resource of time and effort and energy. But with the eyes of faith, we see a different set of rules at work in the world. And it is in fact the wisest investment you and I can ever make. Do we ever treat the resources we have in this life a little bit like this game show? Who can walk away with one million pounds in real cash? Bye. This is it. A life-changing sum of money rests on your decision. But do you go with what's in your head or believe in your heart? Your head or your heart? Your head or your heart? Have you beaten the million pound drop? The million pound drop. I wonder if you could imagine with me that we're playing the million pound drop live version of life. And in front of you is two drop zones. So on one side, you've got living life the ways of the world. The way the world says it makes sense. The things it runs after, things of comfort and security and all those other things. And on, on the other side, you've got the option of following the gospel. You've got a radical response to living life Jesus' way. And you have those two options in front of you of where to put your time and your investment. And I've got, my, I've got all of my time here. Here's the money. Here's the things I could invest. Here's the energy and the effort. And I wonder if sometimes we have the two options and we hedge our bets. And we go, well, here's the ways of the world. And here's Jesus' ways over here. And we go, well, what, could I, what, could I, what should I invest? Well, I can invest Sunday mornings. That's what most Christians seem to do. I'll put some in there. Um, maybe a Wednesday night. I could do some Wednesday nights. Yeah, I'll put some in there. That's worth it. Um, tithing. Well, maybe I'll do it after tax. But no more than 10%. That's rude if they ask for any more. And maybe if I give any more, I might take out of that as well. So I'll keep from that over here. But what else? My career. Well, if I give that up, that's quite a lot to put in. So I'm just gonna stick some of, oh, I'll stick most of that over here, just in case it doesn't work out. I've still got a good, fairly good income coming in. My pension, that's staying. Holidays, well, I, I'm not, I'm keeping them. Um, radically giving to the poor, I'll give a little bit on that Christmas. But everything else, do we do this? Do we hedge our bets and we split it and we agonize like those people on that game show. And we hedge our bets and we stick it some here and some there and just in case it doesn't work out, we've, we've kept enough comfort of the world to not make it have been a waste of time. Because praying, praying every week, every single day, every single week in, week out, not knowing the answers, not sure when they'll come through, or if we'll even see the results in our lifetime, that takes consistent, that's a, lot of, that's a lot of time, a lot of effort, that's a lot of energy 
day in, day out, we have to give. And what if it's not worth it? What if I'm wasting it all and I should have been sticking it over here? Think of all the Netflix programs we could get through in that time. But Jesus says this in Luke 17, 33. He says, whoever tries to keep their life will lose it. Whoever loses their life will preserve it. You see, he says following Jesus, it's like, it's like going, well, here's my life. I'm going to risk it all on something. I'm risking it all on him. It's all in. Uh, recently, that choice came about for us with the choice to go to America for three months with the circuit riders. We, we had a choice. It, it took all our savings and some more, uh, and it took up giving up some other opportunities and some comforts to go, do you know what, God, we're all in. We're all in, because if, if there's a real move of God there, that's seeing a generation come to know you, I want to be all in. That's worth the sacrifice. But that choice only becomes hard when your focus when your eyes are fixed on this and not on him. When your eyes are looking that way and not at him. And I can tell you social media and the rest of the media does not help with that. So through the eyes of the world, our message and our lifestyle looks foolish. And if it doesn't look at least a little bit foolish, we have to ask ourselves, have we gone wrong somewhere? Now, of all the seasons of life we could be living through, what else but a global pandemic and the biggest economic crash of our lifetime do we need to show us how fragile and how fruitless the health systems and political and financial systems of the world really are without Christ? Now, I'm not saying having money or success is, is not good. No, I absolutely believe God wants successful entrepreneurs and hard workers in every sphere of society and leading those spheres. But the question for, for us in that position is have we surrendered them fully? Are we willing to give them up to, to God to do something else if he asks us? And you know, some things, some things are never wasted. Some simple commands of scripture and obedience to them cannot ever be taken away from us. And in this lockdown season where the world is changing, it is, it is a great chance to focus on those things which will have the most significance. And we're talking about prayer and intercession today, and I believe that's, that is one of those things. Where in Matthew 6, Jesus says, Do not store up for yourselves treasure on earth, where moth and vermin destroy, but store up treasures in heaven. And in Revelation 5, uh, there's this picture of God's throne room. And it says that before the Lamb, there are golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. So your prayers are my prayers. And the prayers of all God's people now and through history are before the creator of the universe right now. That's crazy. Your prayers are before God. Nothing no financial crash can take that away. When you share the gospel, when someone comes to faith, when you, when you serve the poor, that cannot be undone. No one can steal that from you. No one can steal the fact that people may be in heaven with you as part through what you may have done by sharing the gospel. The world may call you crazy, but if you give yourself more persistently and fervently to pray for your neighbours, for your community, for your family and your friends, and you bring them before God, you drag them persistently and desperately before God, you will not regret it. No one can take those times away from you. No stock market crash, no health crisis. So my question for us today is, firstly, have you given him everything? On that game of life, have you put it all on Jesus? Or have we hedged our bets? Have we kept some comfort of the world back? Have we kept a bit of security? Or have we given it all to him? Whether you're a Christian or not today, that question remains for us. Are we all in? If you're not, may I encourage you today could be the day where you say, Jesus, I don't want life. Uh, I don't want to live life my way anymore. I want to live life your way. You can be Lord of my life. I surrender it to you. I'm all in for living life your way. I give it to you. 
And if you are a believer, what does it look like to persevere in prayer? As a group and individuals, who is it you're called to bring into the presence of God, desperately and fervently bringing before him? What does your radical response of faith look like? Let's not play it safe any longer. Let's not hedge our bets between comfort and security in God. Let's just go all in. When the world around may be crumbling, we can say we've got a sure foundation and we're investing it all on him. I'm just going to pray. Jesus, I thank you. You are calling on us as individuals, as families and as a church. I thank you. We have a role to play in restoring and transforming this nation and these communities. Help us. Would you just put on our hearts those you want us to pray for? We pray now for a breakthrough in the UK, in our communities, in North Devon and Barnstable. And ask that Holy Spirit, you would come and draw them to yourself. Give us the passion and the commitment to persevere in prayer in this season. In Jesus' name. Amen. You are the word at the beginning. One we've got the Lord most high. You hid in glory in creation. Now revealed in you are Christ. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name.
Once again, if you want to find out more about the Christian faith, please email us response at grovenerchurch.org.uk. It will be our pleasure to make contact with you. We are expecting for you to respond in a way God spoke to you. Thank you very much for being with us this morning. Uh, it was really blessing. Thank you everyone who made this service happen. Uh, every single contribution was so blessing us. So thank you for you to get it connected. We hope myself and all the you have a, a blessing week. And just before you you leave, we have the, there is a, a special invitation for you. Myself and all the I hope to see you tomorrow. Help us stand for our daily devotional. So let's go for the invitation and God bless you. Bye. Bye. Good morning, church. It's Chris here. Um, hope you've had a great service. Hope you've encountered God and had a good morning. Um, we know the church isn't just about services, though, don't we? It's about being connected. It's about being church and being uh, the body of Christ. So um, come join us for coffee um, in our virtual coffee bar this time. Uh, so go grab yourself your favourite coffee. Um, join us at 11.30. Click the link in Facebook and we'll see you there.